Hello, this is Professor Marsh, and this is the uh, lecture for Chapter 6 uh, in Individual Income Taxation, Newbury College in the fall of 2022. Uh, what I'm planning to do uh, in this lecture is to point out uh, the most important uh, aspects that I see uh, in the chapter, uh, things that you should learn and remember uh, for the upcoming midterm exam. Uh, and then we'll also go through the quiz uh, answers and the homework. So uh, let's get started. Uh, the chapter begins by reintroducing us to Courtney. Uh, we just went through uh, her items of income in the previous chapter in chapter five. And so in chapter six now, we're gonna look at her deductions. And so <clears throat> the uh, uh, first learning objective uh, in the chapter is to learn the deductions for AGI. These are the above the line deductions. And we've, of course, looked at those already briefly in a previous chapter, but now uh, we're gonna get uh, more deeply into them. And uh, what the book does is it categorizes the deductions for AGI uh, in three ways. Deductions directly related to business activities, deductions indirectly related to business activities, and deductions subsidizing specific activities. So those are our three types of deductions for AGI. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, that's an important thing. And so uh, deductions that are directly related to business activities <coughs> should be distinguished from deductions related to investment activities. So we have trader business expenses, uh, which is under section 162 of the tax code. And you can see <coughs> that the uh, 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 individual business and investment related expenses uh, for AGI and from AGI uh, and exhibit 6.1 summarizes those as far as what's deductible for AGI what's deductible from AGI, uh, and then what's not deductible. And so you can see that summarized in Exhibit 6.1. That would be something important to know. <clears throat> On pages uh, 6-4 and 6-5, uh, you have more uh, forms, more schedules uh, from uh, the Form 1040 series. And these are very important schedules. Section uh, Schedule C that's on page four of the chapter, uh, that's the uh, uh, schedule for self-employed employed businesses, profit or loss from a business. And an individual or a couple uh, that has a mom and pop business, uh, if they're a couple or perhaps just a mom or a pop business, if they're individual, uh, they would report those unincorporated businesses uh, on Schedule C uh, could be as simple as just some consulting activity, or it could actually be operating a reasonably substantial business, uh, just having it owned uh, directly by uh, one or more individuals. So that's what uh, Schedule C is all about. Schedule E, <coughs> Supplemental uh, Income and Loss uh, Schedule, that's for reporting a rental or royalty income uh, and also income uh, passing through uh, from entities. So uh, you'll see that at least page one is uh, for reporting rental or royalty income. And you can see that, and they give you three categories. And I have some clients who have so many rental properties uh, that they need pages and pages and pages of uh, <clears throat> additional schedules and attachments to this uh, to report uh, all of their uh, rental activity. But uh, that's... Uh, uh, everybody watches those home improvement shows, you know, fixer upper and all that sort of thing. And, and they're fixing them up and they're running them out. Occasionally they're flipping them and that's some more shows, uh, on flipping. So anyhow, uh, then we have, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, discussion of, uh, limitations on some of the deductions. And just note that uh, a relatively recent development at the bottom of page 6 uh, dash six to 6-7 uh, uh, is the 
limitation on excess business losses. Uh, in uh, recent years, they've limited <coughs> the amount of business loss that can be taken in one year to $270,000 per taxpayer uh, per year, or uh, for a married couple, $540,000. And so that's, that's an important limitation. And as I was going through <coughs> and preparing your quiz and your homework, I just tried to go through and sample some of the more important points. So when we talk about the quiz and the homework, uh, we'll come back and we'll cover some of these things that I'm skipping over. So uh, <clears throat> on pages eight and nine, uh, you'll see that there is an above the line deduction uh, for contributions to individual retirement accounts, uh, that there is a deduction for contributions to health savings accounts. Uh, so those are uh, important provisions. Uh, also note that if you have to pay self-employment tax, you do get a deduction for half of the self-employment tax uh, that you pay, uh, just as the business gets the deduction as an employer for the self-employment tax uh, that it pays. So if you're employed uh, by a corporation, LLC, partnership, and they pay Social Security taxes uh, for your earnings, uh, you know, with the employer's portion of the <coughs> Social Security tax, uh, when you have to pay your 15.3% uh, uh, self-employment tax when you're self-employed, you do get a deduction for half of that uh, to put you on an equal footing uh, with the uh, businesses that employ uh, employees. Uh, <clears throat> there's a penalty for early withdrawal of savings, and that's allowed as a deduction also. Uh, so that's uh, the deductions uh, that are uh, related to business or, or indirectly related to business. Now the deductions that subsidize specific activities. Uh, one is <coughs> the deduction for interest on qualified education loans, uh, and that is limited uh, to uh, uh, tw no more than $2,500 uh, in a particular year, uh, but it is eliminated uh, for taxpayers with AGIs uh, uh, exceeding 70,000 or 145,000 if married filing jointly. And uh, uh, that's, uh, it's phased out uh, on a pretty uh, rapid rate. So it's, it's actually uh, uh, by 85,000, it's completely eliminated uh, for singles and for uh, married couples, 175,000. So it's a very fast uh, phase out. Uh, and uh, on page 611 to 613, uh, there is a long uh, uh, summary of deductions for AGI. This, this is important to take a look at and work through with the information in the example that's in the book. I mean, really try to understand, uh, you know, where the numbers are coming from. Uh, that they put on the summaries uh, that you see for Courtney and Graham uh, in Exhibits 6-5 and 6-6. And then when you turn the page to page 612 uh, to 613, you see on the forms themselves where you put the various items uh, of additional income and adjustments to income that go on Schedule 1 both page one and page two of schedule one. Uh, so you can look at the ones that uh, the entries that relate to what Courtney has. And then you can also look at the ones where the, the lines are blank, but you can see the descriptions of the other types of items that are going to go on these pages. So schedule one is a listing of all the stuff that doesn't fit on pages one and two of the 1040 form. Uh, and this schedule is basically additional items that go above the line uh, in uh, the calculation uh, that's done for determining AGI. Now, <clears throat> going on to learning objective 6-2, uh, uh, this is on page 614, uh, we get into the itemized deductions. These are deductions from AGI. And itemized deductions have been greatly, 
greatly limited uh, during the 40 years that I've been in practice, uh, including additional limitations uh, that uh, uh, came into being in uh, 2017 as part of that uh, significant tax act. Uh, these uh, limitations were designed <coughs> to uh, discourage certain things and also to uh, raise revenue to help pay for the tax cuts that were part of that legislation. And the first uh, item on itemized deductions is medical expenses, uh, which are deductible. Uh, however, uh, uh, medical expenses uh, are not uh, deductible unless you have uh, somewhat catastrophic medical expenses. And uh, the uh, uh, medical expense deduction is limited to those expenses that exceed 7.5% of AGI. So <clears throat> if your AGI uh, is, say, $50,000 per year, uh, then 7.5% uh, uh, of that uh, would be, uh, you know, $3,750. Uh, uh, $3,750, and you would not get a deduction for medical expenses until your expenses uh, exceeded that amount. Now, the good thing about that is that if you're an employee, that uh, medical expenses that are paid by your employer are excludable. Uh, so uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a, a good thing, or at least they can be excludable. Certainly, health insurance is excludable as a fringe benefit uh, and <clears throat> certain medical reimbursement plans by employers are also <clears throat> uh, excludable. Uh, and you can see the various categories of medical expenses. There's a lot of information about that, but among most of the clients that uh, I've represented over the years, medical expenses, unless there was a catastrophic illness uh, that was uninsured, uh, have, have never really come into play. Uh, taxes uh, are a second category of itemized deductions. Uh, the 2017 Tax Act uh, limited the deduction uh, to $10,000 uh, for taxpayers, but $5,000 for a taxpayer married filing separately. Uh, and any state and local taxes uh, that it are above uh, $10,000 dollars or the $5,000 limit for married filing separately, uh, those are no longer deductible uh, <clears throat> beginning in uh, uh, 2018. So uh, that's rather controversial. And uh, uh, certainly the, uh, uh, you know, while it might be uh, no big deal down in Florida, although Florida does have very high property taxes, uh, it really makes a big difference to people who are very highly compensated and live in high uh, state income tax states, uh, such as New York and California, Connecticut, uh, and states like that. And so uh, that's something that is <clears throat> politically uh, controversial, and there have been many efforts to try to restore uh, or to increase the limit uh, on the uh, uh, state and local tax deduction, which is sometimes abbreviated SALT, state and local taxes, so S-A-L-T. Uh, interest is deductible. There is a limit on the deductibility of home mortgage interest uh, for <coughs> acquisition indebtedness incurred after December 15th, 2017. Uh, the taxpayers may only deduct mortgage interest on up to $750,000 of acquisition indebtedness, uh, $375,000 if married filing separately. Uh, so if in 2022 uh, you buy a house, you get a million dollar mortgage uh, and you pay uh, uh, 4% uh, on your mortgage uh, in a year, uh, you'll have about $40,000 uh, in uh, uh, interest expense, uh, but you're only uh, able to deduct uh, the interest expense on 750000 750000 is three quarters of a million. And so the interest deduction that you would get <clears throat> would be for 30,000 of that 40,000 uh, and the other 10,000 of interest expense would not be deductible. Uh, charitable contributions are deductible and that's true whether they're made uh, in cash or in property. Uh, 
if uh, they're made in property, they're limited to the basis of the property unless they are contributions of long-term capital gain uh, assets, <coughs> assets that were held, uh, you know, for business or investment purposes for over one year. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, charitable contributions are also uh, those deductions are limited uh, to uh, a percentage of AGI, uh, and that has changed over the years. But uh, uh, today it's basically either 50 or 60 percent. Uh, you have to look it up. Uh, and then if the gifts are of capital gain property, it's limited to 30 percent. Uh, if it's a gift to a private foundation of cash, it's limited to 30 percent. And if it's a gift to a private foundation of uh, uh, long-term capital gain property, it's limited to 20 percent. So, uh, and those are all limit limitations based on a percentage of AGI. Uh, and let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we used to have uh, miscellaneous itemized deductions, but those were eliminated uh, in the uh, 2017 Tax Act uh, to uh, help uh, pay for uh, the cost of the uh, broad-based uh, reduction in tax rates. Uh, there also, there's a casualty and theft loss. Uh, casualty and theft losses uh, are subject to a uh, $100 floor <coughs> and a 10% of AGI floor uh, on all casualties in a year. So uh, uh, you've got uh, a couple of uh, <coughs> basically self-insurance uh, you self-insure your casualty losses in a tax sense, uh, both $100 per incident and 10% uh, uh, overall for a year. So uh, <coughs> uh, make sure you get uh, good casualty and theft insurance uh, that uh, would pay you up to that amount uh, so you don't have to suffer those losses. And of course, many of those uh, uh, incidents are insured. Okay, so there's a summary of itemized deductions on page 6-25. And then you have a really, really useful uh, example of Courtney's filled in uh, Schedule A itemized deduction on page 6-26. So just so as we had uh, her income scheduled on, uh, on Schedule 1 and also on uh, uh, pages uh, 1 and 2, of the Form 1040 in the previous chapter, uh, now we can see how her itemized deductions are filled in on the tax form uh, in this uh, example. And so this is something uh, uh, to learn and, and to, uh, to go by. Uh, then there's a discussion of the standard deduction. Uh, understand that uh, after we get to the, uh, uh, you know, to the uh, bottom line, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, the various uh, filing statuses and the uh, the deductions, the basic standard deductions for the different filing statuses in 2021 and 2022, and the additional standard deduction for age and blindness uh, at the end of the year. Uh, that uh, if you are a person who is eligible to be claimed as a dependent on another return, your standard deduction is very small. Uh, it's the greater of $1,150 or, or $400 plus that individual's earned income, uh, but that calculation is limited to the regular standard deduction uh, based on filing status. So, uh, you know, for a single person, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, $12,950 in 2022. And I think that's actually the answer to uh, uh, one of your homework problems. So anyhow, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, there's also a discussion for the very complicated deduction for qualified business income, uh, beginning on page uh, 629 and continuing for several pages. And then just above that, there's a discussion of tax planning and the idea of bunching itemized deductions, which can be particularly useful 
uh, with uh, clients and, and uh, taxpayers uh, who have lots of charitable contributions. Uh, and so if they can, if they're not going to qualify for having more deductions than the uh, standard deduction in some years, perhaps if they bunch their uh, all of their charitable contributions together uh, into alternate years, every other year, uh, they can at least uh, take itemized deductions in excess of the standard deduction uh, and get a tax benefit that they otherwise would not get uh, if they're just skirting under the uh, standard deduction uh, in those years. And of course, even if they're not just skirting underneath, uh, maybe they can uh, get more of a tax benefit by bunching uh, as well. Uh, okay, so that's the uh, that's really the meat of the chapter. Let's let's go on to your quiz. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull your quiz up, uh, and of course I'm I'm sure I've been kicked off of uh, uh, Wolf Den here, but let me see if I can. Oh, good. No, I can get into it. And uh, here is uh, uh, the quiz for chapter six. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, go to the test builder and let's preview this quiz and let's go through the answers. So, okay, deductions for AGI include the following broad categories of deductions, except, uh, and the correct answer is the first choice, itemized deductions. Itemized deductions are deductions from AGI. And the other three choices, the second, third, and fourth answers, uh, those are the uh, three broad categories of deductions that are allowable for AGI. Number two, deductions for trade or business expenses are limited to expenses related to uh, the business activity and those that are, and uh, the correct answer is the second choice, ordinary and necessary, and that's just right out of the text and right out of the language of section 162 in the Internal Revenue Code. And the other choices are just uh, are just decoys. Uh, rental and royalty income and expenses are reported. Uh, and this, you have a, a picture of this early in the chapter. Uh, rental and royalty income and expenses are reported on Schedule E. <clears throat> that's above the line. Uh, that's income and expenses that go into the calculation of AGI, so the expenses are for AGI expenses. Uh, Charles is a member of a partnership which buys and sells highly speculative collectibles. Uh, in 2022, the market turned against Charles's partnership, uh, and Charles received a Form K-1 showing his share of the loss of the partnership was 350,000. Under the excess business loss limitation, what amount of Charles, uh, what is the amount uh, what amount is Charles' deductible loss from the partnership in 2022? Uh, your choices are zero, 10,000, 270,000, and 350,000. Uh, and the uh, correct answer, uh, assuming that uh, Charles is uh, single, uh, which we don't say, but uh, uh, unless he's married, his, his loss is limited to 270,000. Uh, if he were married, then his loss uh, would be uh, uh, allowable up to 540,000. Uh, Darian has a side gig in 2022, which earned him 20,000 as an independent contractor. Uh, he included the income properly as miscellaneous income on his form 1040. And he also calculated that he owes $3,000 in self-employment taxes. There may have been some rounding going on there uh, for 2022. How much of a deduction may Darian claim uh, for the self-employment taxes he owes uh, for 2022, and the answer is one half of that $3,000 or $1,500. Number six, uh, Philip incurred $250,000 in qualified educational uh, loans during his eight years in college, graduate school, and medical school. In 2022, Philip paid the lenders $12,000, uh, which included $5,000 in interest. Uh, Philip is single and earned $170,000 as a physician on the staff of a hospital. Uh, how much may Philip uh, deduct uh, for the interest on his qualified education loans in 2022? And Philip is way above the income limitation uh, for deduction 
of interest on educational loans, and so he gets a zero uh, for a deduction. Uh, Vicki and Dave are celebrities with an income of over 500,000 per year. They file a Form 1040 as married filing jointly. In early 2022, they bought a new home costing $4 million for which they paid 3,000 in cash and took out a million dollar mortgage. Well, this is right out of what we just discussed going through the chapter, which was payable interest only for 10 years. Why? Because we didn't want the principal to change. Otherwise, the calculation is more complicated. So during 2022, at 4% interest, they paid 40,000 in interest on the mortgage. Under the tax law related to home mortgage interest deductions, how much of the interest they paid may they deduct in 2022? They can deduct the interest on 750,000 of the mortgage, which is three quarters of what they paid. So uh, they can take 30,000 of the 40,000 in interest and deduct it as home mortgage interest deductions in 2022. <clears throat> okay, this is my question uh, in uh, honor of Rosh Hashanah, uh, which is going on right now. Uh, Joshua's great-grandfather was a rabbi at the synagogue in St. Petersburg, Russia in the 1870s. In 1879, the rabbi commissioned uh, Carl Fabergé to create a menorah in the style of his famous eggs. Uh, it was the only menorah ever produced by the legendary jewelry artist. Joshua's family left Russia for America during the pogroms of the 1880s and brought the menorah with them. In 2022, Joshua, a single man without children, traveled often for extended periods and worried that the menorah might be stolen or lost while he was out of town. He decided that he should share it with others, and so he signed a bill of sale to donate and transfer ownership of the menorah to his temple in Los Angeles uh, so that all of the congregation could enjoy the menorah at Hanukkah. Uh, Joshua's great-grandfather had paid the equivalent of $2,500 to Fabergé for the menorah and gave it to Joshua on his deathbed. Assume the original cost is Joshua's tax basis. Uh, so Joshua had the menorah professionally appraised, and the appraiser determined a fair market value of a million dollars. How much is Joshua's charitable contribution for the gift of the menorah to the temple uh, before any limitations related to AGI or itemized deductions? And your choices are zero, 2,500, 10,000, or 100,000. So Really, the only two serious choices are, can Joshua only deduct his basis, or can he deduct uh, the full fair market value? And the answer is he can deduct the full fair market value. It would be subject to, you know, limitations based on AGI or itemized deductions generally, because that's a huge deduction. Uh, but he would get a million dollar charitable contribution deduction, because this is long term capital gain property. Uh, and so that would be eligible uh, for the uh, million dollar uh, uh, deduction, but it would be subject to a limitation of 30% of uh, Joshua's AGI for that year. Number nine, Leo often felt lucky. In 2022, he won $100,000 gambling at local casinos and in sports betting online and by telephone. Unfortunately, Leo's luck often failed him. In 2022, he also lost $200,000 in bets that didn't pay off. How much is Leo's net reportable income or net deductible loss from his gambling activities? Now, with gambling, you're allowed to deduct your gambling losses to the extent of your gambling winnings. So Leo would report $100,000 in gambling winnings, but he would also report $100,000 in gambling losses. So his net reportable income is zero. So the correct answer is A. A planning technique for increasing deductibility of itemized deductions is called bunching. And we just, we talked about that. So that was your quiz. Now let's, uh, let's go on to the, uh, to the homework. Uh, and for that, uh, Let's, uh, you had uh, homework uh, problems 1, 9, 20, 24, 28, 35, 45, 55, 58. Sort of feel like saying hike after all that. It sounds like calling signals. Uh, so question number one. Uh, that was, uh, uh, it was, has been suggested that tax policy favors deductions for AGI 
compared to itemized deductions describe two ways in which deductions for AGR are treated more favorably than itemized deductions. Uh, and what I came up with was uh, for AGI uh, deductions reduce many of the limitations on deductions from AGI, uh, medical expenses, charitable contributions, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, one way that they're treated more favorably. Also for AGI deductions are, that are related to Schedule C businesses reduce self-employment tax. So that's a good thing too. Uh, maybe Darian in that previous question had a few hundred dollars in deductions that got his self-employment tax down to a nice even 3,000. Uh, number nine, medical expenses are only deductible to the extent that they exceed 7.5%. This is question nine. Explain why the medical expense provision is sometimes referred to as wherewithal deductions and how this rationale is reflected on the limit in these deductions. So medical expenses are only deductible to the extent uh, that they exceed 7.5%. So if you have a very high AGI, you have the ability, the wherewithal, uh, to uh, pay them without a tax break. Uh, but uh, if your AGI is low, you're more likely to get a tax break because you don't have the wherewithal to pay those huge medical expenses. <coughs> the government's going to subsidize the medical expenses for low-income taxpayers. Uh, that's the policy. Uh, number 20. Uh, for number 20, uh, take a look at example 6-26, uh, just earlier in the chapter. Uh, bunching uh, can help save on taxes by making you qualify to itemize <coughs> in alternate years. Uh, see the example of Graham, who bunches her charitable contributions, an example uh, 6-26. Clients who have charitable contributions each year and to a lesser extent uh, state and local taxes like property taxes that could be paid in December versus January. But of course that's subject to the $10,000 limit. Uh, those are the kind of uh, clients and taxpayers who can benefit. Okay, uh, number 24, uh, what's QBI qualified uh, uh, business income, that's income from a qualified trader business. Uh, any business except uh, specified services, uh, trader businesses, uh, such as law, medicine, and accounting, they're specified service trader business. But of course, there's an exception uh, to the uh, exception. So uh, specified service trader businesses can still qualify for the qualified trader business uh, income exception if their income is very low. Uh, if it's below, I think, 170000 for an individual or 340000 uh, and change. It's like 170050 for an individual and 347100 uh, for a married couple. And uh, then there's a phase out that goes for 50000 for the individuals and 100000 uh, for the uh, uh, married couple. So, you know, once you get above $440,000, uh, you can't take uh, any of that uh, qualified business income deduction, but it's a, it's a pretty, you know, pretty good deduction. It's an extra 20% of your business income off your taxes, which uh, keeps you uh, in a lower uh, tax bracket and reduces your overall average tax rate uh, quite substantially. Uh, number 28. Okay, so we have Don Juan, a single taxpayer who is the sole owner of DJ's Inc. and S Corporation. In 2022, DJ's Inc. Uh, incurred a massive $600,000 business loss, all of which is allocable to Don Juan as the sole shareholder. Assume that the $600,000 loss is not limited by basis at risk or passive loss rules that we will learn later uh, in the semester. Uh, and that Don Juan has no other business income or business losses. How much of the $600,000 loss will Don Juan be able to deduct this year? What happens to any loss not deducted this year? Well, uh, <clears throat> the uh, excess business loss limitation for Don Juan, a single taxpayer, is $270,000 in a year. Uh, and he can carry forward the unused portion, uh, but just as a uh, note to Ben, a, uh, Don, <laughs> the exception would be 540 
thousand if Don Juan got married by the end of the year. But of course, he won't do that because uh, he's Don Juan. But uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's the answer to that. Uh, okay, number thirty-five. Uh, in each of the following independent cases, indicate the amount deductible for AGI, deductible from AGI, and three, deductible neither for nor from AGI before considering income limitations or the standard deduction. And for uh, A, uh, which was Ted paid $50 rent on a safe deposit box, uh, that's one of those investment expenses that's no longer deductible after 2017. So it's not deductible for either. Uh, B, Tyler paid $85 for minor repairs to the fence at his rental house. Uh, that's going to be deductible for AGI, and it's going to be on that Schedule E that we just talked about. Uh, Timmy paid $545 for health insurance premiums this year, uh, not through an exchange and not with pre-tax dollars. Uh, Timmy is employed full-time, and his employer paid the remaining premiums as qualified fringe benefit. Okay, so... Uh, it's not deductible for AGI because uh, Timmy is not self-employed, so he doesn't get the self-employed uh, health care uh, deduction. But it is deductible uh, on medical expenses from AGI, but it's subject to that big 7.5% limit uh, on Schedule A. So it's deductible from AGI on Schedule A, but it's subject to a 7.5% limit of AGI. And... Uh, then uh, for D, uh, that was test paid $1,150 of state income taxes on her consulting income. Uh, that's deductible from AGI on Schedule A, but it's subject to a $10,000 limit. Number 45, almost there. Uh, so uh, 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 Jance, a single taxpayer, uh, has AGI of 125000 and paid the following taxes this year. Calculate how much Jantz can deduct for taxes as an itemized deduction this year. Well, you've got state income tax withholding of 7200 state income tax estimated payments of $600. you have got a state income tax refund, <coughs> but the uh, uh, problem says that it was applied to this year's tax, uh, so it's treated as received as a refund, but then paid uh, as state income taxes, so you, you do get to add that in. And then state automobile tax uh, based on uh, the car's value, so uh, that's treated as a tax, a property tax of 1900 You add all four of those up together, they all qualify, and it's $10,500 in state taxes, uh, which means that uh, uh, maybe Jantz should have just taken the refund uh, because $500 of the $800 that she applied to this year's tax is not going to be uh, deductible. Uh, but the $800 refund uh, will be picked up uh, in income, I think on the first line of Schedule 1. So uh, anyhow, so the, the correct answer is there's a $10,000 limit on SALT taxes, on state and local taxes, uh, and uh, 10000 is the correct answer. Uh, number 55. Uh, let's see, where is that uh, number 55, 6, 38, 40, next page, here we go. Uh, okay, this is Stephanie, who's 12 years old and uh, babysits, uh, and uh, calculate the standard deduction for Stephanie uh, <clears throat> because uh, she's claimed as a dependent uh, on... Uh, her parents' uh, tax returns. So A, Stephanie reported $850 in earnings from her babysitting. Uh, in that case, uh, she's going to get uh, not just the <coughs> 1150 uh, standard deduction, but uh, she'll get 400 plus 850 or 1250 of standard deduction. So there's no tax. Uh, in B, uh, she earned twelve hundred. I'm sorry, fifteen hundred dollars of earnings uh, from babysitting. Uh, so that increases her standard deduction, four hundred dollars plus her earned income, uh, to uh, nineteen hundred dollars. And so uh, there's still no tax. Uh, in uh, 
Uh, C, she reported $18,000 of earnings from her babysitting. She's doing a big job now. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, uh, her standard deduction is limited to the standard deduction for single taxpayers, which is $12,950. And so uh, she will have some taxable income. Her taxable income will be $18,000 minus $12,950 or $5,050. And uh, uh, <clears throat> one thing I noted about this uh, problem is that in all three cases, Stephanie would owe self-employment tax at 15.3% of her gross income. So uh, even in the first two cases, she's not off the hook on taxes. Uh, she's still going to owe, owe some pretty significant tax for self-employment tax. Okay, question number 58. Uh, this is uh, Roquan, a uh, single taxpayer is an attorney practice as a sole practitioner, sole proprietor. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so warning bell should go off that this is not a qualified uh, business. This is one of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, specified service businesses uh, that for unfavorable treatment uh, from the uh, qualified uh, business uh, income deduction. And so, <clears throat> uh, in this year, he has net business income of 90000 from his law practice, pays 40000 in wages to his employees, has $10,000 of uh, property uh, in, his, in his, uh, the basis of equipment in his business, and no capital gains or dividends. So his taxable income uh, before the deduction for qualified uh, business income is $100,000. Okay, so his... Uh, in, in A, in this in this part of the problem, uh, <coughs> calculating his deduction for qualified business income, we really have to uh, calculate the limit uh, that he is entitled to under the exception uh, for uh, low income, <coughs> what they consider lower income taxpayers. And in the case of a single taxpayer, the limit is one hundred and seventy thousand and fifty dollars. Uh, that's the exception for uh, modified taxable income. Uh, he's well below that. <clears throat> so uh, he had nine hundred. He had ninety thousand dollars in uh, uh, business income. Uh, he had forty, and so twenty percent of that is eighteen thousand. He had forty thousand in wages. Fifty percent of that is twenty thousand. Uh, so it looks like the eighteen thousand is deductible. Uh, if we tried to calculate the other alternative calculation on the limit, it's going to be less than 20,000 because 25% of his wages was 10,000, but 2.5% of his property is only $250. So that limit would have been 10,250. So we use the $20,000 limit and the $18,000 qualified business uh, income deduction uh, uh, for Roquan uh, is going to be that amount. Uh, in B, uh, where his uh, uh, taxable income before the deduction for qualified business income is three hundred thousand, uh, in that case he's way above uh, the phase out, uh, which is a two hundred and twenty thousand oh fifty, and so he gets no deduction for qualified business income whatsoever. So that's uh, chapter six uh, in your book. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learn some things that you can take along with you. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, give me a call or, or uh, uh, come to office hours sometime. But uh, good luck in studying for your midterm, and uh, uh, we'll see you back in class next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.